Good morning and welcome to all of you on this third Sunday of Easter. Just a note before we get started, at the end of this service, um, I have put on the screen the websites for the call day services coming up this week, um, one on Tuesday evening and one on Wednesday evening. Uh, so you may want to be ready to write those websites down if you want to watch those services um, as we look forward to hopefully getting a candidate from the seminary to serve us here in Mountain Lake as our pastor. We use as our order of worship this morning the order of divine service setting one. Uh, for those of who may follow in the hymnal, that's on page 151. We join now in singing hymn number 463. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness, 
and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be. To God. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 1. If you call on him as Father who judges impartially according to each one's needs, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed for the from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith, and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to thee, O Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all the, these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, 
What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with our next hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The stranger shows up on the road, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And that's sort of how Jesus is like. He comes incognito, undercover, as it were. He hides himself. He does this to teach, to let those walking on that road to Emmaus the truth about himself. Listen to the words of the prophet Isaiah. Truly you are a God who hides himself, O God of Israel, the Savior. God hides himself. He will not let himself become visible, yet it is in his hiding himself that Jesus shows himself to be our Savior. It is not that these travelers on the highway to Emmaus were confronted with a case of mistaken identity. Their eyes were kept from recognizing Jesus. It was not that the Lord Jesus was absent from them. He was right there by their side on that road. But they were prevented from recognizing him. They could not see him for who he was. Jesus remains to them a stranger. But like I said, he does this so that he can bring them the message of a Savior himself. So as the conversation goes on, they tell him of their disappointment and now dead hope. But as they are speaking, then the Lord Jesus interrupts Cleopas and his friend. O oh, foolish ones and so of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Jesus comes to them as a stranger so that he might open up to them God's word, God's saving word about the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus himself. He explains to them all the things as they walk on the, along on the road. And as they come to the end of their journey for the evening, they urge Jesus to stay with them. And so he does for a while. He takes for himself the place of host, blessing and breaking the bread, and he gives it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Now they recognize that this stranger with them is none other than Jesus, the same one who was crucified, the very one on whom their hopes were pinned, is now alive and in their midst. No phantom, no ghost, but Jesus Yet when their eyes are open to see who it is who is with them, he disappears. With the Lord's body, he can do with it as he wills. His body is not confined by geography or time, for it is the Lord's body. With his body, locked doors are no barriers. With his body, he need not stay put one place at a time. 
but where he puts himself, he puts himself for you. God does not invite you to search for him where he cannot be found. In the cosmic reaches of space or in the depths of your own soul, Jesus is right there as he promised he would be. Even in days of uncertainty and tragedies, Jesus is there. In the midst of pain, sorrow, pandemic, Jesus is there. Even in those times when we question, where is God? He is right there besides us. God doesn't always seem to be there. We do ask that question, where is God? Where is God? Where we are kept from freedoms of moving about. Where we are definitely facing sickness, possibly unto death. But God is there. God is not a stranger, but he is there to proclaim life and forgiveness to all of us. Raised from the dead, he is free and loose to be wherever he puts himself for you. And you need not be in doubt as to where that is. You see, Christ reveals himself in unusual ways. The Lord hides himself from those men on the road to Emmaus so that he might reveal himself to them, his real self, to show himself where and when it pleases him. And this is how Jesus wills to be known by you in his scriptures. It is in the very word of God that testify to him that he opens up those scriptures for those on the road to Emmaus and for us. This is where we hear that the very Son of God would be handed over to evil men, crucified and resurrected for us. It is in Holy Scripture well, where Jesus Christ reveals himself, not as a ruler or king of this world, not as a savior from the tyranny of bad government, but he reveals himself as the one who delivers us from sin, death, and the devil. It is in Jesus' death, not quite understood by those walking on the road to Emmaus. But it is here that Jesus reveals that it must be that he died for them, for us. He dies on the cross, our death. He dies on the cross with our sin, putting it to death once and for all. And with that death, our sins are wiped out. But three days later, he is alive, risen. He is alive as the women saw, as his disciples saw as these two on the road to Emmaus saw, and as we can see through scriptures. For it is scriptures that testify of him. And as we read, it is in these scriptures that we are resurrect, our redemption is revealed. Redemption took place not in some act of political liberation, 
but it happened in the death of God's own son who paid the price for our release, not with silver or gold, but with his holy, precious, innocent blood. Jesus' own blood was sacrificed for our redemption. This is what was necessary. It was necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory. It was necessary for you and your salvation. It has been done. The work is completed for you. It is finished. Christ was put to death for your trespasses and raised again for your justification. Yet even after his resurrection, the Lord Jesus hides his glory. He does this so that we are not overwhelmed, so that those road-weary sojourners on the road to Emmaus are not overwhelmed by his resurrection. Oh yes, we may want to see lightning bolts, blinding, a blinding flash of dazzling radiance, but in all actuality, that would keep our eyes from the truth. It would overwhelm us. So Jesus comes to the, those walking on the road to Emmaus and to us as a stranger who, uh, whose identity is concealed from their eyes until just the right time, until the scriptures are revealed until the scripture reveals Jesus himself and in the breaking of the bread. What the Lord did for the Emmaus disciples, he does for you and I. Sometimes your eyes are kept from seeing him, but there will come a day when we will see him. On that last day, the Lord Jesus Christ will no longer be concealed from our view. Then all eyes will be open to him, either to their everlasting joy or to their eternal shame. Then we will behold him and not another. Then in our flesh we will see our Redeemer as Job confessed in the Old Testament, but not yet. Now to recognize Jesus means that he vanishes from our sight. He hides himself so that we may learn to hear him, to trust in him. For faith comes not by sight, but by hearing. Now we are not given to see him, we are given to hear him. We hear him as he speaks to us in the preaching of his scriptures his words that are spirit and life. You hear him in his word of absolution that you heard earlier, that declares your sins are forgiven. Your, you hear him not at the ordinary supper table at that road stop near Emmaus, but at his holy supper where he gives his body to eat and his blood to drink for the forgiveness of your sins. You may not see him now. The question may arise, where is God? Where is Jesus? As we face the days ahead, Jesus is there with us. Even though we may not see him physically, he stands beside us with his love and grace, with his words of forgiveness of sins and life eternal. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. 
On this third Sunday of Easter, we can rejoice. For even though Christ is not visibly seen before us, he stands right beside us, keeping us until that day when we can see him with our eyes wide open, that day when we will see him face to face as he returns to gather all of us into his heavenly kingdom for eternity. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Having heard the word of God, we now confess our faith in the one true God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We go to our Lord in prayer. You have heard our pleas for mercy, O Lord, and given up your Son to be our Savior. Hear us now as we come to you on behalf of ourselves and all people according to their needs. Our hearts have burned in us, O Lord, as your word has been read and preached. Keep our faith from growing cold and grant us grace that we may not waver in faith or succumb to temptation. Give to us and to our children receptive hearts that we may hear and hearing, believe and believing, be steadfast in this faith and hope all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have cleansed us, O Lord, with water and the word in baptism, and you have marked us as your own people. Give to us grace that we may live out this faith in holy lives, lifting up your name in word and works for as long as we live. Guide us that we may purify our souls by living in obedience to your word and in brotherly love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless your church, O Lord, that she may welcome the stranger in Christ's name and manifest the unity of the faith in the bonds of love. Bless our synodical president, Dr. Matthew Harrison, our district president, Dr. Lucas Woodford, and our circuit visitor, Pastor Russ Reimers. Bless those training for church work vocations. We pray especially for all those who receive placement calls from our seminaries this week. Bless each of us as we live out our baptismal vocation of worship, witness, prayer, and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard our nation, O Lord, that we may enjoy peace and security in the face of threat and danger. Bless the President of the United States, Donald Trump, the Congress of the United States, and our own state, especially Representative Rod Hamilton. 
our governor, Tim Walz, and all our state, other state and local officials, that they may fulfill their offices faithfully. Bless the members of the armed forces who protect us and teach the nations the ways of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look with favor on those who celebrate baptismal birthdays, including Cody Adrian, Darla Cruiser, Rod Hamilton, Joel Leet, Sarah Wilson, Bernie Mulger, Terry Karshnick, Kermit Leet, and Mary Kispert. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace, strengthen their trust in your goodness, and bless them with your abiding love all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver us from all our afflictions and grant us strength to bear our, all our burdens. O oh Lord, hear us in particular. For Dwayne Vaughn, Naomi Botine, Bernice Christoffel, Dorothy Dunker, Marilyn File, Addison Jansen, Bob Jass, Lois Lee, Mike Munning, Kathy Svalland, Laura Swanson, and Carla Went. Attend to the daily cares and needs of Jerry Zick, Mary Jane, Jean Kruger, Paul and Jody Medcalf, the Jesse and Jamie Peters family, Jessica Shoup, Daniel Willoughby, and those whom we name in our hearts. According to your gracious will, heal the sick, relieve those who suffer, comfort the grieving, and give peace to the dying. Be with all those who serve in the medical field, that they protect, be protected as they serve. Give them love and compassion to all those they serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stay with us, O Lord, and be our strength in weakness and our hope in time of despair. Your gracious will once kept the saints in faith even unto death. Keep us, we pray, with them in your faith and fear that we may be found faithful when Christ comes again in his glory to bring to fulfillment all things once and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and what other things we need, O Lord, we pray you to grant us in the name of and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose death has made full, full, full atonement for our sin and whose resurrection has granted to us the promise of our own joyful resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that, by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close with our final hymn, hymn number 919, Abide, O Dearest Jesus.
Once again, thank you for joining us this morning as we have worshipped our God and once again heard his word of love and grace through his son, Jesus Christ, who has died for the forgiveness of our sins and given us life eternal. Just a reminder, we will be showing you um, the websites for the call day services coming up this week at uh, the seminary in St. Louis and the seminary in Fort Wayne. I ask that you would pray uh, to our Lord God um, as we here in Mountain Lake at Trinity are looking for another pastor and we pray that in God's good and gracious will, he would send a pastor to us. God's blessings to all of you.